All right, folks, here we are back with the ugly lighting and really more than the ugly lighting, the only thing that's gonna drive us crazy is the fact that these lines on this backdrop are not completely vertical, but we, bear with me. Let's, let's just call it a full moon lunar eclipse kind of setup. I'm trying to record this. The, 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 I'm very conscious this week that I kind of prefer the elegance of a weekly overview where there's just one video that talks about what's coming up over this week. And this week we've had three videos, but I'm going to take that as being sort of, sort of symbolic and emblematic of the time now that we are heading towards the first of two eclipses and heading towards Mercury retrograde and heading towards this vortex in energy, uh, this portal that hopefully will spit us out somewhere. And I'm going to hope that the eclipses for all of us um, are constructive, even if they bring experiences that are challenging. And that is a, a perfectly appropriate note for this particular video. So, so this is the third of three videos I'm doing this week, the week of the 18th of March. The first one concerned Mercury entering its shadow period and the Mercury retrograde from April 1st to 25th. The second one was about Venus conjuncting Saturn. Venus conjunct Saturn on March the 21st. And then the third one is, of course, is this full moon lunar eclipse on March 25th. For me, the midnight of the 25th, between the 24th and the 25th, exactly Pacific time. So that constitutes the key themes for the week. And I've had to break them up into three separate videos because they're important enough to talk about as separate videos. It may be a lot of content to take in, but now you know they are three separate videos, so you can you can you can avail of them um, when you have the time. We're headed towards a full moon in and of itself and a full moon eclipse. So the energies as we progress and as we get to the 25th are going to become more and more unwieldy, more and more emotional, more and more reactive, more and more intuitively aware, a little bit like the hair standing up on a wolf's back or, you know, um, Depending on how sensitive you are to the moon, um, people have trouble sleeping sometimes around full moons. Sort of the emotional and intuitive body is aware. And um, there's can some, depending on where this full moon is occurring for you, uh, there can sometimes be a feeling of, oh, there's a lot to do and there's a lot going on and will I get this done, will I get that done? And as I say, the cup of milk sort of boileth over. You could be on the receiving end of a tantrum. You could be feeling like you've had enough and even if you don't let it out, you could have your own full moon moment that reveals some sort of emotional or intuitive truth to you. Similarly, if you're on the receiving end of someone else's meltdown, consider that underneath whatever it is that is emerging that may have been suppressed, there may be some emotional or intuitive truth that needs to be recognized and respected. Um, Full moons can bring, especially this particular full moon lunar eclipse, can bring closures, finally turning the page on something. It can mean turning the page on something because something has become emotional and challenging or because you're reaching completion on something. You're putting something to bed. You're done with something for now. Something has emerged and you realize something that you've decided to release it. And I'm going to expand on this theme a little bit more. Full moons can bring visibility, they can bring contracts, they can bring closure, they can bring completions. So so, so all full moony things apply. The disk of the moon is full. It is spotlit. So if it brings visibility to someone, if you have a full moon in the first house, a full moon in the 10th house as a result of this, it could bring a sort of temporary visibility. If it's in the 11th house, it could bring a kind of, or the third house, it could bring a kind of, temporary visibility or prominence on things like social media or within friends crew groups or things like that. Um, if the full moon is in the seventh house, it could be a business or personal partner who's having a meltdown. If it's a full moon in the first or the second, it could be you. In the seventh and eighth, it could be the partner, completions, contract, blah, blah, blah. When it comes to being this an eclipse, this is a south node eclipse, so it's an eclipse of release. And on the Aries-Libra cycle where the eclipses are occurring currently, it is the only discrete eclipse cycle where you have a south node where you have a solar eclipse on October 14th of 23 2023 and a corresponding lunar eclipse 
on March the 25th, 2024, in the same sign. All the other eclipses on this axis, you know, there could be a solar eclipse in Aries and a corresponding lunar eclipse in Scorpio, not in Libra or not in Aries. Uh, th this is what happened last year. We had the solar eclipse in Aries on April the 19th and a lunar eclipse in Scorpio. Um, as opposed to in and a lunar eclipse in Scorpio on October the 28th. Sorry, I'm trying to get too many facts out. Similarly, next year in 2025, we're going to have a solar eclipse in Aries or a corresponding lunar eclipse in uh, Pisces, I'm pretty sure. This year, certainly that is the case. We have the Aries eclipse on April the 8th, and we have a corresponding lunar eclipse in Pisces in September of this year. So, so this is the only from October 14th of 2023 to March 25th of 2024 is the, the, the one six month cycle between a solar eclipse and a lunar eclipse that are on the same axis. And these are eclipses of release when it has to do with the south node. Typically it's behaviors, patterns, and attachments that have become subconscious and subconsciously strong, like a strong and even a developed, frankly, an overdeveloped muscle that needs to be released. An attachment to something or an attachment to how you think things should be. In the Libra part of your chart, the October 14th solar eclipse was in Libra. The March 25th lunar eclipse is in Libra. The house that is occupied by Libra in your chart. Something there needs to be released. It could be something physical. It can be an attachment to something. It is, could be an attachment to how you think people in that part of the chart ought to behave. It can be something that you were subconsciously relying on. It's like an overripe fruit. It is time for it to shed so that you can move towards the North Node in Aries, the part of the chart occupied by Aries. The North Node eclipses are in Aries. They're pulling you in that direction. That's where the expansion and the growth is. The North Node eclipses will promise more than they will, de they will deliver, but they need to have that carrot at the end of the stick quality. Following the North Node may make you do rash things sometimes and take certain types of risks, and it can create sometimes a kind of material loss. But the ultimate direction and the ultimate pull um, is, is, is undeniable. It's important to remain grounded and take, but it's hard with the North Node because, because the excitement and the sense of adventure is so strong. But, but always pay attention to what the overall message and direction is with regard to where it is that you should go with those North Node. with the North Node transiting the Aries part of the chart and the North Node eclipses in Aries. The growth and the desire and the adventure and the development is there. Just know that sometimes the things that we know we need to do and want to do and ought to do that require growth and development introduce a note of instability and you've got to figure out how to manage that. Now, with the South Node and the North Node and these eclipses, they work hand in hand. So when it comes to, for some of us, when it comes to October 14th, March 25th, December 14th, January 24th, 25th, the week before, week after, we may feel like the developments that have occurred or taken place have more of that Aries North Node quality in nature, as opposed to Libra really South Node quality in nature. It is impossible to know when it comes to the North Node whether releasing something in the south node part of the chart allows you to move forward to the north node part of the chart or whether the call of the north node requires you and makes you release something in the south node it's a chicken and egg thing they're just they're 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 the same axis they're, they're just the same point it's a calculated point it's not a planet it's a calculated planet point that goes 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 together um calculated set of points that, that, that flow together, that are completely linked. Um, the the um, hunger of the North Node and the elimination of the South Node. Um, 
It is more likely, however, that you will have had clues about what it is that you need to release. And if you go back and look at the week before after October 14th, two months after the solar eclipse, December 14th, two months before the lunar eclipse, January 24th, 25th, and then the month of the week of the lunar eclipse. By the time you get to the lunar eclipse, I was saying this to a couple of people I did readings with in this last week, with the lunar eclipse, it's not as if on the day of the lunar eclipse, lightning is going to strike. For some people it might, but it's not a universal thing. It's more... Sometimes from a solar eclipse, it's like the energy expands and then it contracts and focuses and comes back to a laser point by the time the corresponding lunar eclipse. And sometimes it's more of a crescendo. It just expands. The release starts to occur. And by the time the lunar eclipse occurs, we are already in a place where we're so ready emotionally and spiritually, spiritually to release it that we are already well on our way. And what the lunar eclipse marks in a certain sense is where we're turning the page and turning the page may not feel like it's that big a deal. Whatever it is that we're releasing has been in development and we may have been given clues and we may have reached an internal agreement and we may be surprised by the synchronicities around if you know the house occupied by the sign of Libra in your chart, what that house stands for and the complexities of the meaning of the house. They're not they're not esoteric, but there's typically something behind the mundane things we associate with the chart or with the house. If in the second house we talk about money, really it is earned income. And really it is how we translate what we contribute that is of value into earned income. Do we charge correctly? Do we overcharge? Do we undercharge? How do we value ourselves? Our sense of self-worth our sense of independence versus codependency, what we value, what we offer that is of value, how we create our abundance as a result of sharing what we value and charging for it. That is what the second house, for example, is about. It's not just my paycheck. Similarly with the third house, it's a question of fitting in, it's a question of community, it's a question of environment. Anyway, I can go on and on and do the whole video on the meanings of the houses, but that's a different that's a different topic altogether. Well, I'm sure it'll be interesting at some point if we get a chance to do it. So where does Libra sit in your chart? Where does Aries sit in your chart? What house is occupied by those signs? And what do those houses stand for? What needs to be released in the Libra part of the chart? so that you can move towards the Aries part of the chart and find sort of the light at the end of the pier there. What is it that you're moving towards? What is it that you're craving? Eclipsy things may happen that give you a sense of pulling you in a certain direction. Remember always, always, always with the North Node Troop, try and remain as grounded as you can because the pull it exercises. But very often when you honor the North Node, there is a kind of throwing caution to the wind quality. We're dealing with Venus conjuncting Saturn this week. So it could be that in moving towards the North Node, Saturn is quick to remind you to keep an eye on your purse and to not throw caution to the wind to some extent. So this week may have some of that kind of quality to it. But when it comes to releasing something, it could be that as you head towards Sunday, something occurs that is emotional for you, a full moon for you, a challenging for you, that prompts you to be done with it. Or it could be that you have been ready to be done with it for a while. And by the time you get to this weekend, it's just a question of sending the email or doing what needs to be done. It could be that for some people, we move forward in the Aries direction in such a way that it automatically creates a closure in the Libra part of the chart. We're not going to have, gosh, let me see. Are we going to have any eclipses in Libra again? I don't think so. 
I think we get continue to have eclipses in Aries, one on April 8th, one next year. So the pull in the Aries chart continues, but then we have corresponding lunar eclipses in the Pisces part of the chart as early as the second half of this year. Bear with me as I do one of my characteristic. Let me pull up the information and see and communicate it to you. We do have, actually, we do have a solar eclipse of release in Libra on October the 2nd. The Pisces lunar eclipse is on September 17th this year. The solar eclipse in Libra is on October 2nd. So we continue this theme of release in October. Interesting. And then after that, we don't. After that, on March 29th of 25, we have one more Aries solar eclipse of leaning into, and that's it. The Pisces Virgo eclipses continue into 26, even into, even into February 2027. Okay. Ooh, and 27, 28 all have five eclipses, and 29 has six eclipses. Golly. Okay. Well, look at what you learn when you hang out with me. I better just take away my lists of eclipses for now. I use them sometimes to get a sense of where things are going, as, as astrologers sometimes need to do. Okay. This particular lunar eclipse in Libra trines Pluto and Aquarius. Pluto entered Aquarius briefly in 2023. It's entered Aquarius in a slightly more marked manner in 2024. It's going to back, go back into Capricorn one final time in the second half of this year. And starting the beginning of 2025, it is going to enter Aquarius for good. This year, starting February, between February, let's just say in the first, from February the 1st to about February the 21st or thereabouts, February the 1st to February the 8th, 17th, 18th, we had the personal planets as they entered the sign of Aquarius conjuncting Pluto. Pluto and the sun marched into Aquarius together on January 21st. And they conjuncted in Capricorn, but they entered Aquarius, and Mercury conjuncted Pluto on February the 5th, and then Mars and Venus followed suit on February 14th and 17th, I think, or something like that, February 13th and 17th, something, something like that. So we've already gotten a taste. Whenever Pluto enters a house, it does have a tendency to declare what it is going to start to change and shift around. And as I've said to you, those of you who are contemplating, because I've asked you to make Pluto's transit through Capricorn almost more of a priority this year in the second half, because it's best to cooperate with whatever transformations Pluto has been making in the house occupied by the sign of Capricorn since 2008, so that you can finish that off and Pluto doesn't land you with one of its notorious unwanted but demanding urgency type of transformation. So if Pluto's been going through your sixth and you've been ignoring certain things about health or healthcare or regimen and knowing that you've been slowly making a transformation but not nearly as fast or completely or as effectively as you like, if you don't cooperate with Pluto, it could, in, you know, in the second half of the year, just kind of be like, here's a crisis and now you've, here's a crisis and now you've got to uh, make the change that it's been wanting you to make gradually since 2008. So, Always worth looking at where has where's Capricorn in your chart and what has Pluto transformed in it since 2008 to the end of 2024. And when Pluto entered that part of the chart in 2008. And I find that for a lot of people, the transformation actually really got going by about 2011, 2012. Pluto is a slow moving planet. It's going to be in the sign of Aquarius for about 18 odd years after it enters in 2025, 17, 18 years. So it's a slow, but it is a but it is a definitive transformation. And as Pluto enters, and we had these personal planets conjuncting Pluto, it has started to set the stage for what it is going to try and do. And it could be multiple levels of transformation depending on where Aquarius sits in your chart. There's something about this full moon lunar eclipse and whatever it is that you're releasing that allows Pluto to effectively and constructively construct something for you in the Aquarius part of your chart. And if you are attuned to what you are trying to release and what you are going to release in the Libra part of the chart, 
for many of you, I dare say, you can see that conjunction, that, 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 that connection. You can see what it is that needs to be released and what it is that you're resolving to and potentially going to and have been in the process of since the middle of October of 2023 what you've been in the process of releasing and what you're going to find that you're able to release by this weekend, the release of which will allow Pluto to constructively transform something and build something in the Aquarius part of your chart. I'm very intrigued by the fact that we have another solar eclipse of release in Libra on October the 2nd. So some of these themes continue October the 2nd and December the 2nd in terms of what it is that needs to be released. We'll see. We'll see what this mystery is and what this release is going to be. Could it be that whatever transformation or direction that we have been trying to move in since the second half of 2023, is it going to take us till the end of this year to complete? doesn't have to be a bad thing. Sometimes letting go of one phase to another phase, if it's gradual, it means that we still have the support of the old as we enter the new. You know, let's see. Let's see. As I've said, as we go through this eclipse season, there is a question of the portal open to go towards the direction we wanted to go in the middle of February. I'm not talking about things that I've been talking about in previous videos. So you can always look to those to kind of get an expansion of this. I'm really saying this for people who have been watching my videos regularly and so have a sense of the narrative we're in. If by July, August of 2023, there was a direction we wanted to move in or in the second half of 2023 direction we wanted to move in that was thwarted, eclipses of release October 14th, December 14th would have been January 24th, March 25th of this year would be part of this narrative to help us to understand what needs to be released to help with this transformation. There are multiple clues we would have gotten. We would have gotten the conjunctions with Pluto. We would have gotten, you know, whatever it is by the middle of February that we were just like, okay, wow, I now understand why the universe was not allowing me to gallop forward. And now the portals are open and we are less inclined to gallop because now the reality of now, now we can actually potentially make the change. So we want to make sure that we, we recognize we recognize the complexity of making a change. And so we look to things like the eclipses and Mercury retrograde to help us accelerate that. And as I've said, for a lot of us who have Mercury direct in our birth chart, it'll take us till early May, even into June, to have a clear sense of what that portal is and where we're going and what we feel comfortable moving towards at this point in time. But with this, with, with the knowledge now that we still have s eclipses of release on October 2nd, and the December 2nd of this year will also have that. It makes me wonder whether if there's going to be a kind of a time release towards what it is that we move towards. That frankly gives me a sense of comfort. But I'm equally inclined to put my money on the fact that for some people, the bigger direction shift might occur by May or June of this year. The bigger commitment. Different tangent especially for people who follow my videos on a regular basis. Now, the only other aspect that I think is encoded into this full moon is Jupiter conjunct Uranus in Taurus, which is getting closer and closer and will be exact on April 20th or 21st, I believe. We have other conjunctions coming up. You know, Mars is going to conjunct Saturn, but I think that that is going to be closer and worthy of consideration and encoded into the solar eclipse in Aries on April the 8th and less this week. The Venus-Saturn conjunction will be done and behind us as we head to the 25th, it may be part of our preparation for heading to the 25th. There may be a note of caution, a note of warning as we head to the 25th, but, but it will be behind us. And Venus conjunct Neptune is still far enough out that we don't need to factor it in right now. And the conjunctions with Chiron and the North Node, again, are either done, and I'm thinking of Mercury making those conjunctions, or are very much part of the new moon solar eclipse in Aries on April the 8th. So what we're left with 
as the non-lunar aspect that we need to look at and consider that is close enough and powerful enough is Jupiter and Uranus conjuncting in Taurus. You've heard me say this millions of times. I'm going to say it again because there might be people who are watching this video of mine for the first time than any other video. Jupiter ending and starting a 12, 13 year cycle in the sign of Taurus. The house occupied by the sign of Taurus in your chart. Uranus carving out a path that is more individual and true and right for you, that may not jive with conventional wisdom of how to go along with and how to do and how to achieve things in that part of the chart, but will be specific to you and your path and what will make you shine and what your individual gifts are and what your uniqueness is. And Jupiter and Uranus conjunct April 21st. Jupiter continues to be in Taurus till May the 25th. But since May 2023 to May 2024, Jupiter is trying to, is going to, trying to, but also going to end a 12, 13 year cycle and plant the seed for a new 12, 13 year cycle. If you are, you've heard me say this too, if you're on the right track in the Taurus part of the chart, it will seek to spiral you up in a more individual way towards something that is right for you. All right, we've done this and built this in the Taurus part of the chart since 2011, 2012. Now let's move in this direction and lift it up. If you are on the wrong track, Jupiter might end something like a layoff, like something along those lines, so that you have the opening to go in a direction in the Taurus part of the chart that is more true for you. Or Jupiter can create an ending where you continue down your old path, but are able to start something on the side, a class, a conference, something on the side to start to bring in what is right for you in the Taurus part of your chart as well. And the conjunction with Uranus is powerful because whatever this new beginning is this year, but especially since May of 2023, as we head to 2024, again has the sense of freeing you to move in a direction that is right for you and that has your unique individual imprint on it in the Taurus part of the chart. And so we have to ask and consider whether this eclipse on the 25th and what we are going to be releasing and the transformation that's going to be occurring and contributing to in the Aquarius part of the chart, whether it releasing what we're releasing not only allows us to move towards the Aries part of the chart and remember, even though we are in a Pisces month, even though we are in the going to be soon by the eclipse in the middle of the 28 day month that was started by the Pisces new moon. This particular full moon is related to the new moon in Aries because it is on the Aries Libra axis. The full moons right now occurring before their corresponding new moons. After June, July, after we have the two full moons in Capricorn, we will enter a cycle that may feel a little bit more natural where we have the new moon and its corresponding full moon two, month, two weeks later. Right now we get the full moon first that kind of shakes things up. So for example, for the Pisces new moon, we had the Virgo full moon on February the 24th that kind of brought things to a kind of a head that gave us, and this is also relevant and important as a full moon, that gave us a reaction, an intuitive and emotional reaction to what was then the Sun, Saturn, and Mercury conjuncting in Pisces. So that by the time we got to the new moon in Pisces, two weeks later, I think it was February the 8th, we had time to process and digest our reaction to what was going on and being made clear and being made visible in the Pisces part of the chart so we could then enter the new moon month in the Pisces part of the chart. Carrying both the energy but also what we had processed for about a couple of weeks to begin and try and resolve what we needed to resolve in the Pisces part of the chart as part of this month of Pisces. But this particular full moon, lunar eclipse, understandably, something comes to a head, something gets released that you'll be able to connect to the April 8th solar eclipse. 
in Aries. Venus, the ruler of this eclipse, is in Pisces, exalted in Pisces. That could be Pisces is ruled by Jupiter and Neptune. Neptune is the dep dispositor of this chart, one of the dispositors. Jupiter is in Taurus, ruled by Venus. So Jupiter and Venus are in mutual reception. What that means is that Jupiter is in a house ruled by Venus, or sign ruled by Venus. Sorry, folks, the backdrop is even more weird now. I, I, I had to, I'm going to have to edit this at the very end of the video. My cat was making some sounds and I was trying to figure out what the hell was going on. Irrespective. Oh my God. I don't know what is going on with this backdrop. So we'll just, again, we'll just chalk it up to the lunar eclipse. Um, as I was saying, Venus is the ruler of this particular full moon in Pisces. Dispositors are Neptune and Jupiter and Venus, which are in mutual reception. Jupiter in a sign ruled by Venus, Venus in a sign ruled by Jupiter. So, um, Venus exalted in Pisces. Moving between Saturn and Neptune. There is the potential to clear there is the potential to clear your path to abundance. I mean that sounds very cheesy, but you know, I'm just gonna interpret it, it as I see it. The releasing of whatever you you know, Venus is exalted in Pisces, will have conjuncted Saturn before will have infused a sense of responsibility into the proceedings as we, this is where that Venus conjunct Saturn video that I just did before this becomes interesting, infused a sense of sobriety and responsibility when it comes to finances and relationships and what you're trying to settle in the Pisces part of the chart becomes important. It could be that what you're releasing in the Libra part of the chart has a connection to the Pisces part of your chart. I wouldn't push it, but I can certainly see that I can I can understand how that could be. That it is for its benefit. And especially if the Aquarius and Pisces houses, which are consecutive houses, are in relationship with each other, then the trying to Pluto and Aquarius and being ruled by Venus, which is transiting Pisces, could reinforce this connection. What I'm saying right now, you've really got to, you know, it, I know that it seems, but it's worth, it's worth considering. It's worth considering. Releasing whatever we're releasing in the Libra part of the chart, it could assist us. We're doing away with some of the Neptunian, either it could contribute towards if you're trying to build a more Neptunian career in the Pisces or or activities or take a more Neptunian direction, artistic, spiritual in the Pisces part of the chart, or if you're trying to heal or release sort of Neptune fogginess and deceptiveness, you could be releasing people or patterns or toxicity. That's really what the South Node eclipses are so good for. It is kind of an el elimination point of something that has been, that needs to be eliminated or it will start to fester and infect. And it could assist with clearing something out that then also contributes to clearing out some of the Neptunian fogginess in the Pisces part of the chart. And with Jupiter being one of the dispositors that is in conversation, you know, there's the, the explore this. You know, if you're really if you're if you're at a point with your astrological chart that that this is interesting for you to see, explore how releasing something in the Libra part of the chart 
would contribute to Jupiter's new beginning in the Taurus part of your chart and the connection to that with the Pisces part of your chart. Getting very... What I'm saying about rulerships and dispositorships, if it's your cup of tea, it's your cup of tea. If it's not your cup of tea, you can leave it alone. The more salient points is things are going to get more and more full moony as the week goes by. Certainly by the time you get to Friday, Saturday, Sunday, it could be that, you know, as I said, it could be visibility, it could be contracts, but it could also be that you're at a point where you're just ready to let something go. And this has been building since October 14th of 2023 and you've had signs October 14th, December 14th, January 24th, March 24th, 25th. Releasing this allows you to move towards the Aries part of the chart, allows Jupiter and Uranus to create what they're trying to create with that conjunction in the Taurus part of the chart. The Aries and the Taurus part of the charts are the most expansive parts of the chart. Releasing something allows Pluto to build a platform for the change that Pluto is going to build in the Aquarius part of the chart. That is the heart of this eclipse. The rulerships and dispositorships are a fun thing for the rest of us to kind of explore what it is that we're releasing in Libra and how that might create room for what we're trying to stabilize in the Pisces part of the chart and the new beginning that we're trying to create in the Taurus part of our chart. Thanks for indulging me in that sort of esoteric adventure. And the biggest thing I want to warn some of us on is that we may reach a kind of full moony frustration with something. If we know what it is that we've been trying to release, something may come up over the next three or four days as we head to Sunday that upsets us in a full moony way. That it just makes us go, all right, I'm done. But the I'm done does not have to be, and I would certainly advise against anything that could get you into trouble. It does not have to be outwardly expressed unless you feel like you can outwardly express something and draw a line or a boundary if something is upsetting you in a way that will not backfire on you. You know, it's again, it's this question of you might be right, but you also need to be effective. And it can be frustrating, especially when you're dealing with something or a situation that you think is unfair. And if you lose it, then people make a big deal of the fact that you are losing it. Oh, this person is emotional and this person is... Um, short-tempered, or this person yells, or this person's way of dealing with, you know, may not honor the fact that your cup is really full about a certain issue that you feel really passionately right about. But it's that much more effective if you're able to do it in a way that feels like fewer fingers will be pointed at you in the manner in which you do it. And if you feel that self-expression is not worth it, you are just going to find a way to release something as a result of something that occurs over the next few days that is frustrating to you, then fine. That may well be, and especially if you can see the correlation to those dates I mentioned, October 14th, December 14th, January 24th, March 24th, that it might be a sign or a signal that this is a set of Attachments, entanglements, with the south node, it's like a whirlpool. It's like the spider's web. It keeps drawing you in. It has this kind of, and it's a very specific feeling of depletion that we get. We get sucked into the drama and the mire. And it feels like second nature sometimes but it doesn't feel good it feels like by the time we're done with a particular interaction that it has somehow depleted us like we've wasted time like it's not helping us at all for other people as i said it could be that something emerges this week that is you're moving in the aries towards the aries part of the chart and as a result of an automatic pull as a result of automatically thinking well if i head in this direction 
that I'm ready to release this anyway. You just go ahead and do it. For some people, the eclipse will be a bigger culmination. For some people, it will be the turn of a page that is part of, that is going to be bigger and more momentous than other turns of pages, but is just a consequence of being, you know, turning the page since October the 14th. And we finally just go, done. All right, I will leave it at that. Happy full moon to the best of our ability. I wish you well through the spirit of acceleration, hopefully, that will get you to wherever it is that feels clearer and stabler or clearer and more defined and more consequently exciting and enlivening by early May as we get through this eclipse on the 25th and the eclipse on April the 8th and the Mercury retrograde April 1st to 25th. You're welcome to check out other videos, especially the ones that I've done recently. The two others that I refer to that are relevant for this week might be useful. Up to you. Comment, like, gives greater circulation. If you're interested in getting a reading with me, you can contact me at the email address in the description area below. I can send you the relevant information. Subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't already. Click on the bell icon next to the subscribe button and the wiggly bell on top. Click on that and you'll be notified when I do new videos. Thank you for your time and attention.